Um, so it's a very warm welcome to this, the, the fourth in the series on, on energy security. And you'd have to say, as the series has progressed, uh, so has the issue. I assume it's a coincidence uh, that uh, the nation is, is suddenly turning on to these, these issues. Um, but this evening, I think we're particularly fortunate because uh, this evening uh, we address, I s suspect, some of the, the small areas of optimism in, in what can be a fairly challenging and at times uh, perhaps a slightly dispiriting area of discussion. So it is with uh, great pleasure that I welcome you and open this evening's discussions to our first speaker. Uh, Dr. Mark Diesendorf uh, researches and consults in interdisciplinary fields of sustainable energy, sustainable urban transport, theories of sustainability, ecological economics, and practical processes by which government, business, and other organisations can achieve ecologically sustainable and socially just development. Uh, Mark's with the Institute of Environmental Studies, which he joined in June 2004. He was prior to that a senior lecturer in human ecology at the uh, Australian National University, uh, and then professor of environmental science and founding director of the Institute for Sustainable Futures at the University of Technology in Sydney. Well, thank you very much, Eric, and it's a great pleasure to be here, ladies and gentlemen. So, in a way, uh, Eric was saying before we started, actually, that this is the good news evening, and I, I think it is. We, we do have some good news, and uh, in, in the face of a very serious situation with global climate change. So, what I'm going to try and do uh, this afternoon is to, to first put the, the problem of climate change response of greenhouse gas mitigation into a, a broader context and then focus on renewable energy, the technologies that are available, and then discuss briefly the kinds of policies we need to actually get renewable up and running on a large scale, on the scale that it actually deserves. So setting the context first, if we look at environmental impacts such as climate change, Paul Ehrlich and John Holdren, decades ago, produced a, a very useful formula for environmental impact, in this case applied to climate change. It's simply the product of population, affluence, which is consumption per person, and technology impact, which is, uh, characterises the, the dirtiness of the technology. Yeah. Dr yeah. Hugh Sadler discussed consumption to some extent in the context of applying efficient energy use. That's also, that also has technological aspects to it, but it's, it's clearly a consumption problem. And the, in addition to efficient energy use in this series, there's been discussions of fossil fuels and nuclear power. Well, today it's my task to, uh, my very pleasant task, to discuss another set of technologies, which are the renewable energy technologies. Okay, so both the previous federal government and the present federal government have uh, decided that their principal solution to global climate change is coal power with the capture and burial of carbon dioxide, uh, which we call CCS, capture and coal with capture of uh, and, and sequestration, uh, to use the commercial term, the, that term. Now, the only problem with this solution is that it's unlikely to be commercially available until the 2020s. There are real risks of the gas escaping. It's the international estimates of the costs of this technology are put it at more expensive than wind power and some of the bioenergy uh, technologies that I'm going to discuss. Having said that, it's essential that, that this technology is developed and it is actually applied in some places in Australia fairly urgently. However, I suggest that we should be a little cautious in believing politicians when they put out the line that, well, Australia is going to develop CCS and then we'll sell the technology to China and the rest of the world, and we're going to save the world. Uh, this, as I really feel, is a delusion of grandeur. We really need a superpower economy to develop this technology, and right now, the super superpower, the United States, has actually frozen its, ex its expenditure on its biggest CCS project, which is called FutureGen, simply because the costs have been escalating out of all control. The other solution that some people have been pushing is, of course, nuclear power. 
which is a 1970s technology, and it has all these old problems that are listed there. Some of them are actually worse at present than they were, like the proliferation of nuclear weapons. Much worse now that the United States is busy undermining the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty by selling uranium to India, and in fact Australia uh, was on the brink of doing that too. But the good news is that we've actually got a genuine solution, but it's not actually being implemented fast enough. And I call this sustainable energy because it's not just renewable energy, it's a very intimate mix of efficient energy use, or energy efficiency for short, or cutting energy wastage, and renewable energy. And as we introduce particularly renewable energy, we've got the cleanest of the fossil fuels, natural gas, as a transitional fuel that can be used very effectively for co-generating heat and electricity together, uh, as a backup for solar hot water, as a backup for solar thermal electricity and for wind power. Gas could be used very usefully, but of course we're busy selling most of our reserves to China right now, uh, as if there was no tomorrow. So, Sustainable energy is this broad mix that you can see. It's not all wind power, it's not all solar power, and of course we know the sun doesn't shine at night and all that stuff, but it's a mix. And when you take these technologies together, you can have, we can generate a system that is just as reliable as our current system uh, based on fossil fuels. So we've got a range of technologies illustrated there, and I'm going to go through them fairly quickly but in the hope that they'll, you know, we can discuss them in more detail later. So, and I'm going to divide this into pre-2020 and post-2020. And the reason for that is that Australia has a long-term target for 2050 under the current uh, Rudd government, but it has no short-term target as yet. And yet, if we are to actually turn around global warming, we really have to get some runs on the board well before 2020. So I'll start with the pre-2020 technologies, the technologies we have today. And efficient energy use is the cheapest and fastest set of technologies. I don't have to really dwell on this because Dr. Hugh Sadler in the first event in this series discussed uh, at least the, on, a, on a broad brush level uh, the benefits of, of energy efficiency or EE as we call it. And one of the most important points to make, though, is that energy efficiency saves money, a lot of money, so that the economic savings from energy efficiency, from reducing all this wastage, can be used to pay for quite a large part of the additional costs of renewable energy. The cheapest and fastest set of technologies are not being counted because macroeconomic models generally, they assume a thing that the economists call general equilibrium, which basically means that um, you've got a competitive market out there, and so um, <clears throat> there's, nothing, there's nothing like energy efficiency that isn't being implemented up to uh, cost saving, you know, up to its economic advantages. Or as they put it rather crudely, you don't find $50 bills lying around in the street. 